Hey guys, what is going on Fly here? Hope you are having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about German battleship Bismarck. If you guys don't follow the news feed for World of Warships, this was posted yesterday and pretty much it hints at the addition of the German Navy or if you, if you want to be technically correct, the, sorry if I mis mispronounced it, the Kriegsmarine, I believe, which was the Navy of Nazi Germany that superseded the Imperial German Navy of War I. Anyway, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about what the Bismarck was, why was it feared, and how she sunk. Hashtag spoiler alert. So pretty much the birth of the Bismarck was a treaty called the Anglo-German Naval Agreement in 1935, which allowed the German Navy to expand its ship's construction and tonnage. But in 1939, Hitler said fuck it, so in result, two Bismarck classes were laid down in 1936. The Bismarck itself and her sister ship, if I sorry mispronounce it, the Trippets. These things were very feared upon in that day and age. The main reason why this ship of class was so feared upon was its armor. Almost 40% of the Bismarck's displacement was armor, 12.16 inches in the thickest sections, or should we call that the Citadel. The amazing thing about the Bismarck is that even with all that armor, she was still able to maintain 29 knots, which was three knots slower than the hood, but the hood weighed 6,000 pounds less with less armor. So a fun fact about the politics behind the, uh, Kriegsmarine is that Hitler wanted the biggest, baddest thing possible, aka the mouse, aka the Yag Tiger, etc. I shit you not, he wanted to arm the next generation of ship classes, the H class, which would have been larger than today's Enterprise and Nimitz class nuclear powered carriers, get this, with 800 millimeter guns or, th or 31.5 inches. Like, let's, let's be real. Anyways, onto the armament of the Bismarck. It had four turrets of dual guns clocked in at 38 centimeters or 15 inches. So there are some pros and a con of having four turrets with two guns. We'll start with the pros. More turrets means you can fire at more targets at different areas, pretty much increasing your field of fire. Also, having two guns in the turret instead of three or four means that the fire rate is much faster. At perfect conditions, the Bismarck could fire a full salvo at three times per minute or every 18 seconds. Also, having more turrets means it added redundancy if one of the turrets was knocked out of action. So now onto the con. Pretty much having more turrets means you have to extend the protection of the Citadel or the area of the ship that has the magazine and other vital equipment. Also, it increases the chance for a magazine or critical hit as there are more critical areas for a shell to pen. So it's a trade-off of what kind of ship setup you want. Let's now talk about the fate of the Bismarck. We'll start off with the Battle of Denmark Strait, which was against the Royal Navy that included the HMS Prince of Wales, the HMS Hood, and two other heavy cruisers. Pitted against the Bismarck and the heavy cruiser, sorry if mispronounces, Prince Eugen. In this engagement, only 10 minutes in, the Bismarck landed a 15-inch shell into the Hood's magazine, causing her to explode and sink within three minutes, losing all of her crew except three. The Prince of Wales continued to exchange fire with the Bismarck, but because she was so new, she suffered from serious malfunctions in her main turrets, causing her to disengage. This engagement was considered a tactical victory for the Germans, but it was not without damage done to the Bismarck. The Bismarck's forward fuel tanks were damaged, causing her to retreat back to occupied France for repair, stopping its main mission of disrupting Allied shipping in the Atlantic. Because of the dramatic loss of the Hood, the Royal Navy issued a large British force to pursue the Bismarck. This is part two of trying to sink the Bismarck. The British force that was sent on the hunt consisted of one aircraft carrier, three battleships, three cruisers, and six destroyers against one battleship, the Bismarck. This is how critical the British felt about neutralizing this ship. So how the events unfolded is that the HMS Ark Royal, which is a beautiful aircraft carrier, sent out 15 swordfishes equipped with torpedo bombs to engage the Bismarck. On their way to the Bismarck, the swordfish pilots mistaken the British cruiser Sheffield for their target and dropped their torpedoes. Luckily, these torpedoes were fitted with unreliable magnetic detonators. Quick learning with fly. The difference between magnetic detonators and contact detonators is that with the contact ones, it has to hit the target, and the magnetic ones will explode if nearby. Anyways, the swordfish torpedoes had the unreliable magnetic detonators, therefore causing most to explode on contact with the water, and the ones that didn't explode, the Sheffield was able to evade them. Returning back to the carrier, they were rearmed with contact detonators and sent off again. Finally, identifying the Bismarck, the torpedoes were released, and three had hit, 
Two impacted the forward engine room and one striking the port steering room and jammed the rudder at 15 degrees left or port thus making the Bismarck helpless in terms of maneuverability. At this point, the British force had now caught up with the Bismarck, and during the night, the six destroyers harassed it. However, no real damage was done. On the morning of the 27th of May, the helpless Bismarck was attacked by the battleship King George V and the battleship Rodney. By the way, the Rodney is a Nelson class, which is my favorite British battleship class. Anyways, after about 100 minutes, the Bismarck was sunk by the combined effects of shell fire and torpedo hits. Fun fact, the Rodney is the only battleship to launch torpedoes at another battleship and get a hit. After the engagement, the British warships rescued 111 survivors. However, lingering U-boat reports in terms made the fleet retreat. So that is it from me, guys. I hope you have learned something in this video as well as enjoyed it. Thanks again for allowing me to hit 100k subs on YouTube. Without y'all crazy bastards, none of this would be possible. I sincerely thank every single one of y'all. Also in the comments below, let me know what ship you are most excited about. I can tell you right now, my favorite is already in game and that is the Fusho, but another one I'm really excited about is the Royal Navy HMS Nelson. All right guys, until next time, peace out.